Hey, Teron, I'm just curious, uh, in your experience, uh, I know you guys have been together for a while, some of you guys are on the offensive line, but how long does it take for an O-line to really get that chemistry cohesion, uh, I guess, in practice? I don't, I don't think it's an uh, estimated time frame that, that we can say that, that really give, gives us that. Uh, it's just reps, just, just as many reps as we can possibly get. Uh, more, the more time we can have, more dialogue we can have, uh, talking through things and then going on the field working through things. Uh, I don't think it's just like a time frame that I can say is, is how much time we need to, to, to get that accomplished. Next question from Amy Just. Hey, Teron, what's your, you know, early takeaway for, from seeing Cesar Ruiz in, you know, these past few practices? It's been impressive. He's been impressive, for sure. Uh, even beyond the practices, um, off the field and, and the, the acclimation period we've had, uh, just hand, handling him, himself as a, as a professional, uh, being such a young, a young player at, the, at this stage, hasn't taken an NFL snap yet. But uh, you can see the first round, you know, his, his pick justified. You know, you can just see it from the way he carry himself and, and, and how he uh, handles his business on the field. Uh, a ton, ton of stuff to learn and, and, and to work through for sure, but uh, you can you can definitely see why the organization was so high on him. Hey, Teron, Nick Easton stepped up for you guys in a big way last year. Do you see that kind of translating this year in training camp? Maybe his confidence is up or just how he handles himself? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, we're we going to need every, 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 every step, every, every person on his team, on his roster. And uh, it's always got to be next man up mentality without a drop off, you know. So we got to we gotta make sure everyone is, is up and ready, ready to go whenever the, the number is called. And it can be any any day, any any moment. And uh, Nick is a guy that, that takes pride in his work and, and getting himself prepared to go and uh, prepared to start too, not just to sit as a backup. He's, he's trying to work his way and just be ready as a starter. Next question from Cat Terrell. Hey, Saran, in this particular offense, how much is asked of the center in terms of making the checks and uh, protection calls? Is that largely on him, or would it be more on the quarterback? Well, seeing that our quarterback is a Hall of Famer and an uh, extremely bright guy, right. we, uh, we're fortunate to have Drew Brees under center, and uh, he sees things that, that most people don't. Um, so he's making a lot of those checks calls. Uh, the center does have responsibilities, you know, and, and up front we have our responsibilities as well to identify what we need to identify. Um, having someone like Drew that, that's been doing it for so long and at such a high level, uh, he simplifies things for, for everyone, not even just the O-line. Next question from Amy Just. Hey, Teron, yeah, again, through these first uh, few practices, how have you seen uh, Caesar and Eric kind of working together next to each other, regardless of who's at center and who's at guard? It's been great. It's been great. Two young, two young great talents, really. You know, Eric is he's he's come in. He, he's looked like he's he's in his third or fourth year already. He just seems poised and experienced, and it's crazy to think it's just his second year, and he, he's still a rookie to us. You know, he's still got three games to go, so. Um, it's been it's been smooth transition. Those guys work well together. Uh, like I said, Caesar, Caesar has handled himself with a, a great um, level of professionalism that that makes it easy to work with someone like that and uh, exciting to work with someone like that. He's he's willing to take the coaching and criticism. Uh, you know, not as much rookie hazing anymore, but uh, anything we ask him to do, he's he's on top of it. Next question from John DeShazer. Ron, you might have already answered this to a degree, but if Caesar starts, or I guess when he starts, it, it could be the third rookie offensive lineman you guys have had starting the last four years. Can you pinpoint why you guys have been so successful at, and able to work in rookie offensive linemen going back to Ryan and then last year with Eric and now with Caesar? I mean, you just think about those three talents you named. I mean, those three players, though, those are, you know, Ex ex exceptional, exceptional names, uh, to say the least. You're talking Ron has already got some all pros under his belt. Uh, Eric will have him, and and C's is working his way. You know, uh, so I, I think it's a 
hats off to the the front office and the uh, scouting department, you know, doing their homework, uh, bringing in the right guys and um, the system, the system as well. And by system, I'm talking to the offensive line coaches. Um, you know, the, that tireless, tireless work they put in. Dan Rochard is a, he's a workaholic and it can get a little, a little, uh, to be a bit much at times. But uh, he just wants to see us excel and and play our best football. So, you know, a combination of those things and and those those three great talents, uh, success and it's going to be a continued success going forward. Next question is from Doug Mouton. Hey, uh, when you're answering Amy's question about Caesar, I'm sorry for one more season. Yeah, you're going to do it anyway. Uh, you mentioned. <laughs> you mentioned professionalism a couple of times. Mm -hmm. That is something that's extremely important to you personally, right? And that's something that sort of your offensive line room is built on, right? His fit is good. Would you say that? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I, I think the word, it, it's so much that goes into the word of professionalism. And it, it, it's an umbrella for, you know, being responsible, being accountable, uh, Doing your job at the highest, the, the highest level you can, you know, trying to better yourself. All those things that goes under that umbrella of professionalism, and uh, we have so many guys that just come in with with that or, or learn that early, and uh, we just we got a real professional environment here. You know, we we come to handle business. We have fun for sure, but we come to handle business. Next question from Ro Brown. Yes, Teron. I don't know how much you've kept up with it, but uh, what's going on in college football with to play or not to play the Power Five conferences? Of course, the conference you played in the Southwestern Athletic Conference said they're not going to go until maybe in the spring. Just your thoughts on that? Do you think that the Golden Lions will get to play this year or what? Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Uh, yeah, I've I seen that about a month or so ago, and uh, it's unfortunate. It sucks for sure. Uh, I mean, the old, those young men and been putting in their, their work and dedicating themselves to to play the game that they love and just unfortunate and it's the time that we are, are in right now is there's no one to blame or uh, no correct protocol or right way to just do these things we kind of are we're learning on the fly and uh so i hope at, at a point they get a chance to to have that season whether it's shortened or or you know a full season but uh you know wishing wishing those guys uh, wishing those guys the best and I'm always rooting for the, the for that swag, swag football. Next question is from Cat Terrell. Oh. Hey, Karan, when you think back to your first start late in 2013, what did you come away from that game thinking, oh, this is what I really need to improve on the most, or this is the most difficult thing I had to struggle with, if that makes sense? I'm just curious what part is for a young lineman to kind of get past and yeah. Like, on their way to improvement or, or whatnot? Uh, for me, it was more so embracing the experience. Uh, it, was a, it was a big game with a, a lot on the line, you know, the magnitude of the game, but just um, embracing that experience, everything that, that took place throughout the game, communication, crowd noise, snap count, all those things that um, just you, I hadn't dealt with up to that point, you know. So just um, embracing that experience to the, to the, to the fullest and uh, being prepared for the next the next week, and you know, having more experience and knowing what's what to look for, uh, what needs to be improved on, what I did well, what I didn't do well, uh, and it's a tedious process, you know, paying attention to the small details and just trying to work on one thing one thing at a time. Next question is from Brooke Kershaw. Hey, Teron, have you noticed a difference with Andres Pete not there, and how much has he just missed in these first two days? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely a difference when we, when we got a, got a guy out, uh, just their presence. You know, we try to, we try to play and keep the same play calls and the same rules and blocking schemes the same, you know, regardless of if we're, we're missing, uh, someone, but just, uh, Andrew's presence. Now he's going into his, uh, sixth year and he's been around for a while now and he's a little bit more vocal. You know, you guys know Andrews, he don't, he don't speak much, but. You know, you get the occasional uh, speak up in, in meetings and, you know, just talking to my friend in, in, um, lock, in the locker room. So just just uh, that part not being there. Um, as far as on the, the football field, I'm, I know he's going to be rehabbing and, and busting his butt to get back as soon as he can. Uh, he's a guy that, that you can see the most, 
physical change uh, from from last year till till now. So you can you know he's devoted his time and energy into coming back and being ready to play. We got time for one more from Amy Just. Amy. Yeah, following up on that, and you touched on it. You know, he noticeably worked this off season. I mean, he looks like a completely different person in some of the pictures <laughs> that we've seen. Uh, how, I guess, frustrating is that knowing he put in so much work this off season just to get derailed again? Yeah, yeah, it is tough, and it's tough. And, I, you know, I'm somebody that can speak on that personally. Uh, just going through, building up, and then you, you had a, the injury, and it's a, and it's a setback. But it's, it's a mental thing. It's a, it's a mental thing. Uh, physically, he's going to be fine. You know, he's not, it's not the end of his career at all, you know. So uh, physically, he'll be fine. He'll be, he'll be back rehabbed and ready to go. It's just mentally staying engaged and, and not getting to that thought process of here we go again or, or I did all this to get set. None of that. None of that. And, uh, you know, he's somebody that's, that's mentally tough and has faced adversity. Uh, he got the guys around him as well to, to make sure that that's not a problem. So uh, whenever we get Big AP back, we'll be ready to roll.